Yo. Hey man, what's up? Not too much about to watch Raw. Uh, I haven't been on Twitter or anything. Like some some big things blowing up. They got some big major like hundred person match going on. Oh, you know what it is? Sixteen man elimination. Team USA versus Team the World. While it's Fourth of July, we're gonna get something like that. Uh, do, do they say who it is? Yeah, freaking, I, I missed the pre-show again. Uh, I don't know, freaking network streaming issues, you know how it is. Yeah, even even in Canada, we get those sometimes. <laughs> Alright, who's who's on who's on the world team? Jericho, Owens, Zane, Alberto, Cesaro, the Dragons. Well, I could do without Sheamus, but that's a pretty kick-ass team, isn't it? Well, yeah. I'll... Well, it's all the people that aren't involved in other feuds, really. I mean, they're going to fight each other, there's going to be dissension in the ranks, all that kind of shit. So who's on the big red, white, and blue team? Uh-huh. 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 So, other than Apollo Crews, there's nobody on that team that's even remotely relevant. <sighs> this is going to be a clusterfuck, isn't it? I mean, the other, guy, the other guys have to win. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, USA wins, LOL, I know. Um... But I mean, like, after we get this out of the way, like, the rest of the show should be good. What do you mean it's the main event? What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your July 4th Raw review. Yeah. I mean, our... our, our our thing here in Canada happened a couple days ago, but good for you guys. Happy Fourth of July, America, and all that. I did, despite what I said in in the in the little skit there, which is just a joke. It's just in fun. Nobody lose their shit. I did, in fact, watch the pre-show. We knew, and it was sort of touted on Twitter throughout the uh, throughout the week. We were going to get Team USA versus Team the World in a 16-man elimination tournament. The Dudleys, The Big Show, Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, Zack Ryder, Kane, Apollo Crews versus Chris Jericho, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus, Cesaro, and the Lucha Dragons. But that's not all. We're also going to get Ziggler versus Rollins, which is great. We're going to get Ambrose versus The Miz, and we're going to get Roman Reigns versus his suspension, and so far the suspension is still winning. We're also going to get Becky versus Summer Rae. Interesting not. But, uh, breaks my heart even more to say that Titus O'Neil gets another, another shot at the affirmative, I mean, the United States Championship. But, yeah. So they talk all through the pre-show about, <coughs> about this food fight that happened earlier in the day. And we're going to see clips of it on Raw. They say all through the pre-show, you can go to Facebook, you know, facebook.com slash WWE and see highlights of the food fight, which is nice. But we start off the actual show with a shot in the back of all the wrestlers eating together. Now, I could be very old school when I say this, but does it not completely kill kayfabe to have all the wrestlers eating together? All the wrestlers just hanging out, chilling out, you know... The uh, the rising stars are there, even though they're supposedly doing their videos live from Puerto Rico. We know it's all stage. We know it's all bullshit. We know they're all friends behind. But doing something like this just fucking kills it. And I mean, the 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 food fight thing is so fucking cliche at this point. It's ridiculous. Um, what are, what are the highlights of the food fight? Miz tries to make a speech, and he gets shot with chocolate sauce. The VOD villains try to tell them how to celebrate. 4th of July properly, and because Aiden English is going to sing a musical rendition of the Declaration of Independence, I think it was. Jericho's in the back avoiding the the food fight, and he finds a band-aid in his food. Hilarious. Kane and Big Show do their cliche, he grabs his throat, he grabs his throat. They stand there for a second, and then they see a better target in Heath Slater, and they choke some Heath, Heath Slater through a table. It's It's terrible. Really? Um, Heath Slater's teammates are the ones laughing at him the loudest. Um, everybody leaves. Everybody clears out for the show once the place is completely destroyed. 
And then we see Kevin Owens. Then we see Kevin Owens coming out, bragging, and he has the greatest line in the world, which is like, this would never happen on Canada Day, which is fucking great, because it's only four days ago. And then, from the perspective that it's shot, it's kind of... Because the pie comes at the camera and sh and does the camera like it's supposed to be Kevin Owens' face, but then it flips so that we see Kevin Owens' face so that it looks like the cameraman hit him with the pie. Which is useless, because you're not going to have a match later on tonight between Kevin Owens and the cameraman. Um, <laughs> it's a bunch of shit. Lillian Garcia sings the national anthem, which I fast-forwarded, I'm not going to lie. Lillian Garcia, great singer. I don't mind her singing at all. You know, WrestleMania comes around, she wants to do the anthem. Fucking great. If she, I know she's a recording artist of, of her own volition. If they want to have her out there one night doing one of her songs, uh, she's got a cool song, actually. I can't think of the, the name of it right now. I think it's uh, You Don't Know Me. It's actually a decent song. It's not my cup of tea, but it's actually a decent song. Just the... Uh, if you don't, I used to shit on Mark Pearson for saying stuff like this because I was like, oh, WWE is an American company, and of course there's going to be some Americana, but I'm sorry as, as much as I try to be understanding and as much as, you know, people could say the same thing up here in Canada a couple of days ago, the whole show was just beating you over the head with an American flag to the point where it was almost insulting. But I digress. Titus O'Neil versus Rusev for the United States Championship comes on right now after Lillian sings the national anthem. So I'm like, everything is in place for Titus O'Neil to become the new affirmative action. I mean, United States champion. Um, so can, can I talk first of all about Titus O'Neil's stupid pants? Stupid, stupid, stupid pants. Oh yes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably wouldn't be watching this review anyway, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch Raw this week. And, 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 and Titus O'Neil, if he wasn't a goofball already, if he wasn't already being handed the world on a silver fucking platter in such a non-deserving way that it's amusing, if he wasn't being rewarded for yoking up his boss and 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 such and such during the Daniel Bryan thing, the, the, the stupid pants! I wanted to start a whole separate thing on social media, hashtag Titus O'Neil's fucking stupid pants, ha hashtag please don't give this guy the affirmative, I mean United States Championship in those stupid pants. Jesus Christ. Slam and chops by Titus and he throws him around for a while and gets some more chops. But basically the beginning of this match is just Titus O'Neil walking around the ring silently saying, hey look guys, I'm big. Be Rusev hits a, gets, basically gets sick of this after a while. Belly to back suplexes uh, Titus O'Neil out of the fucking ring. It's great. Titus O'Neil eats steps on the outside and a drop kick by Rusev once he gets back in the ring. Rusev locks in a headlock and Titus O'Neil hits him with a kitchen sink because kicking somebody in the gut is hard. I have to do I have to do the because that's hard thing for somebody else now, don't I? Because Naomi's not here. Oh yes. They trade punches because punches are hard and messy, messy clotheslines by Titus O'Neil are hard. Uh, clash of the Titus, but Rusev kicks out, putting the biggest fucking smile on my face. Two kicks to the head and accolade later and Rusev is still your United States champion. Accolade after the match, Titus O'Neil's down, Rusev mocks America and we're off to the fucking races. We have up next, we have Enzo and Cass versus the Social Outcasts. And I know, especially after last week, you gotta be thinking, okay, please don't tell me this is Enzo and Cass's story going forward. Don't worry, we will get to that later. But the Social Outcasts come out there dressed as Minutemen, which means they're basically in old-timey jackets and shitty wigs. And Slater's out there. Slater, who was injured in the food fight, has his head all bandaged up and his arms in a sling. Roddy, Roddy, Ross. So we know that it's going to be Dallas and Axel in this match. Enzo and Cass come out. They do a typical Enzo and Cass type opening. Enzo mentions all the presidents that the states have ever had for, for reasons. And then Titus, or, um, wow, well, not Titus O'Neill. Cass basically says, I had a whole funny shtick that I was about to say, but that was impressive. So I'm just going to tell you that these guys are soft. And uh, can, can I just, can I just, once again, it, it goes along with the Titus O'Neill's stupid pants thing. Enzo, Enzo Amore has all kinds of shit all over his pants. He's, he's like that. That's his thing. Um, any of you that are on social media, Twitter, and especially Facebook Messenger, you know that there is a, you know, I guess it's cute to people that use it. It's a animated poop icon. It's a pile of poop with a smiley face. And, 
it's all good. I, I, I can accept it in the context of Facebook. Hey, that was shitty, or whatever. Enzo Amore has the poop icon on the back of his pants. What is going on in WWE tonight with the pants? I'm just saying. Enzo's got a poop icon on his pants. I don't know why. Back elbow by Dallas is starting a mud hole by Axel. Double team mud hole by the Outcasts. Bo tosses Enzo into Alex or Axel's knee, which is kind of a cool thing because he sort of tumbles him in and it hits him with the knee strike. It could be a really effective double team maneuver, not a finisher, obviously, but a good double team maneuver. If these guys weren't dressed like they were from the 1400s or some shit and making complete goofs of themselves, um, Axel misses an elbow, Cass comes in, kills everybody, Empire elbow, big boot, Air Enzo. And they get the obvious win. And you think that that's the last time we're going to see Enzo and Cass tonight. But you're wrong. Charlotte comes out, and some idiot in the back gave her a microphone. She talks some shit about basically how she's better than everybody, and everybody's jealous of her, and it's like, no, no, no. And she's just so shit on the mic that I don't care what she's saying. What I do care about, they're both out there in, like, almost semi-formal black, dress, two-piece outfit type, and Dana Brooke, Dana Brooke, not exactly my cup of tea, I, I will say that, because there's infinitely women in, in the WWE that are hotter than both of these girls, but Dana Brooke looked a hundred times better than Charlotte, and because neither one of them were saying anything of reference, and neither one of them were fighting, I really only have to go on what they looked like, and Dana Brooke looked infinitely better than her superior, uh, Charlotte, Sasha comes out, owns them on the mic, with a bunch of stuff, talks about what it's like to be a boss, you know, you can say this and that, it may, totally cuts down Charlotte's victory at WrestleMania, which is great, cuts her down for using her dad, cuts her down for using um, Dana Brooke, basically says, you know, talk all the shit you want, you've never beaten me, which is fucking great, Charlotte squawks some more, Sasha continues to own her on the mic, and then Charlotte, single, or sorry, not Charlotte, Sasha, who is about half the size of one of these girls, takes out both of them, including a bank statement on the champion, fucking yes, Charlotte, get the fuck out, Dana, you're getting there, but don't, just don't. Um, champion versus champion, you figured this would have been the main event, and when you look at all the different matches that were lined up for tonight, you didn't think that the 16-man clusterfuck would be the main event, you would have thought maybe your Intercontinental Champion versus your WWE, or WWE World Heavyweight, depending on where you're reading it online, Champion would be the main event, but it's just not. Miz versus Ambrose, headlock by the Miz, knocked down two slams by Ambrose, boot by Miz, Ambrose tosses Miz out of the ring, hits him with a suicide dive, they brawl outside, and Miz crotches Ambrose on the rail. Takes a moment to make out with the super fucking hot Maurice, and we go to commercial break. Miz has Ambrose on a leg hook as we come back from commercial break, jabs and chops by Ambrose, drop kick to the knee by the Miz, who immediately starts working Ambrose's knee. People who don't give the Miz enough credit for his psychology could take a note here. Drop kick to the knee by the Miz, and then he stomps the knee, chops by Ambrose, and a figure four by the Miz. Ambrose tosses the Miz out again, rolling clotheslines by Ambrose, dirty deeds is countered into a figure four, is countered into a roll-up attempt, rebound clothesline by Ambrose. Suicide dive by Ambrose. Top rope something by Ambrose is met by a kick by The Miz. Skull crushing finale is countered into a roll up near fall by Ambrose. Boot by The Miz. Dirty D's by Ambrose. And Ambrose does get the obvious win. As much as I'm a fan of The Miz, I know that Ambrose is our new champion who's going in against two challengers at Battleground. One of them who's, you know, not really around right now. Um, and the Intercontinental Championship is lower than the WWE Championship. I don't have a problem with Miz losing here. Rollins is coming out because his match is next. They sort of pass each other on the ramp. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ambrose sort of gives him a gives him a pat on the ass, you know, go get him type thing. And then he's almost he's almost at the top of the ramp, and he looks back and he's like, nah. And then he goes to leave. And he goes. He they change Rollins because Rollins' music is playing as he's coming down to the ring for his match, but they switch it to Ambrose's music, because Ambrose runs back down the ramp, into the ring, out of the ring, and invites himself to join on commentary, where JBL proceeds to say a lot of stupid things. Uh, I think the worst thing, the worst insult JBL came up with tonight was he asked Ambrose what was up with his hair. It's like you're angry at your own head. For reasons. Rollins versus Ziggler is next. This is a match we've seen before. This is a match we could see again, but Ziggler 
doesn't really have a feud right now, and Rollins is going to fight for the championship in a couple weeks. So, gee, I wonder who's going to win here. Trip by Ziggler's and Je Trip Ziggler's. Oh, yes. Trip by Ziggler, jab by Rollins. Chain wrestling sequence and Rollins bails. A takedown and some uh, couple of decent pinfall attempts by Rollins. Sorry, by Ziggler. Rollins bails again. Test of strength and boot by Rollins and a mud hole stomp. Front slam by Rollins. Drop kick by Ziggler. A hangman by Ziggler. and insiguri by Rollins as we go to commercial break. Beat down in the corner by Ziggler, you know, taking on some heel tendencies for a minute, and Snake Eyes by Rollins as we come back from commercial break. Top Rope X-Factor by Ziggler, which, okay, I like Ziggler, but the Top Rope X-Factor that he pulled off tonight was super sloppy, and it looked like somebody could have gotten hurt. I will say that about people I like, as well as people I don't like. They're just, just nothing's as sloppy as Titus O'Neil or Naomi, but I don't have to worry about her right now. Rollins eats the turnbuckle, rolled in close lines by Ziggler, splash, netbreaker, and a shower of elbows by Ziggler, super kick by Rollins, super kick by Ziggler, that booking that I love so much. Anything you can do, I can do better. You can super kick, I can super kick better. Jumping spike DDT by Ziggler, but Rollins miraculously recovers for a pedigree of his own, and Rollins gets the win. Rollins gets up on the desk while Ambrose is still there, talks some shit about Roman, who's not there, which makes him look like a pussy, tells off Ambrose a little bit, Ambrose and Rollins brawl, dirty deeds on the Spanish announce table, which doesn't break, which just leaves you with a sort of sick sounding thump, because you gotta think that these guys thought the table was gonna break, but that ends the segment. We get a weird ass Wyatt promo video from the Wyatt compound, inviting the New Day to come and find them. I really wish Harper was here for this feud, so we weren't relying so heavily on Braun Strowman. Anyways, Vicky Guerrero comes out because she's not Kurt Angle. Dirt cheat people know what I'm talking about. Uh, plays to the crowd, wants to run SmackDown Live. She gets removed by security. We show... We show the big show giving Team USA a pep talk, which I could not give a fuck less. I'm not American, so I don't have that bias going for me. And like I say, other than Apollo Crews, you got Jack Swagger, who hasn't been relevant in months. Mark Henry, same deal. Dudley's, who I want to be excited about, but I'm, I'm just not. Zack Ryder who's like the little engine that could of the mid card and big show the last time we saw big show he was giving a pep talk to apollo cruz who's in this team so i guess there's a bit of continuity there but apollo cruz is like one of the few people he doesn't talk to specifically in this pep talk so it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. In the back, we see Dolph Ziggler mocking Vicky Guerrero as she's removed from the building. The Vaudevillains took on the Golden Truth with Bree Zango at ringside <coughs> in Tyler Breeze's VIP section, which is funny. Truth and Gotch start, and there's a spin kick by Truth, a clothesline by Goldust on English, a bulldog and an uppercut, a snap slam by Goldust. Truth tackles Gotch on the outside, and they hit a powerbomb neckbreaker thing that is apparently called Solid Gold, and Golden Truth get the win. And Breezango run in, and they continue the feud. No, they don't. Nothing happens. Golden Truth win. Breezango are there for reasons. Like, they weren't even on commentary. <laughs> um, I don't care about Darren Young and Bob Backlund. Still, record number of weeks with me not caring about this Darren Young bullshit. Cena comes out, panders to the crowd, recaps the uh, feud he's had with Styles. He says he wants to know who's better between him and Styles, even if it's not me, which is a bunch of bullshit. Talks about how they cost each other the WWE title shots last week, and he calls out the whole club. Styles mocks Cena for being pathetic. You know, you have a little tiny setback in your life, and all of a sudden the world's unfair. I was pissed off in Japan when we went to tour Japan because it should have been a homecoming for the club, and all the merch had your face on it. We run Japan, we ran Japan, and we're going to run the WWE. WWE. At Money in the Bank, I beat you, and that's why you want to bury me now. Nobody wants to help you. We found that out last week. They all hate you, John. They identify more with me than they do with you, because they're worried about being buried by you, too. We're just going to keep beating you up for fun. And then they start going through this thing. President's Day, what are we going to do? We're going to beat up Cena. Halloween, what are we going to do? We're going to dress up like whatever and beat up Cena. Christmas, what are we going to do? We're going to wrap some presents for our kids and then we're going to beat up Cena. But what are we going to do tonight? We're going to beat up Cena. They surround him. They do a three-on-one beatdown. The save is made by Enzo and Cass, which is badass. And here's the thing I will say about John Cena. Conspirators will say that John Cena is a dick and makes, you know, makes use of everybody. But if you want to go that route, John Cena being smart, John Cena attaching himself to whatever is hype right now, um, he's teaming with Enzo and Cass, who are the most popular team in the WWE right now, going up against the club, who are rapidly becoming the most 
uh, the rapidly becoming the favorite most popular faction. So it, it's one of those situations where five sixths of this match that's going to happen. Oh shit! Spoiler. Um, five sixths of this new feud that's going to come out is going to be really really popular. Cena will get swept up in that, and it's all good. Later on in the night, I might as well say it now. It is announced that at Battleground we're going to have a six man tag. It's going to be the Club versus John Cena, Enzo, and Cass. And you know what? In all honesty, I think it's going to be a fun match. I think the way that Cena's wacky and goofy and people don't accept it, and Enzo and Cass are wacky and goofy and people love it, they're going to come together in some kind of way. They're, 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 going, they're going to be the White New Day. I'm sorry there's no politically correct way for me to say that. We're going to have the club versus the White New Day. That's how that is going to go. Enzo and Cass and Cena, obviously chase the club away and the baby faces stand tall Becky versus Summer um, another match that was announced for Battleground is we're going to get Becky versus Natty which is great for a couple of reasons because I want to see that match but second of all this does not involve the women's title and I'm pretty sure we will have a women's title match at Battleground which means we're going to have more than one women's match on a pay-per-view which is pretty decent uh, slap by Summer, slap by Becky. Anything you can do, I can do better in its lamest form. Uh, Becky eats turnbuckle and stomps by Summer. Corner choke by Summer and a seated sleeper. Kitchen sink and a takedown by Summer and a DDT. Rolling clothesline corner splash, exploder suplex by Becky, and a disarmor gets the submission win. The match was short, there wasn't much to it. I do know I have seen Summer Ray have some good matches. It just, uh, I'm, I, I'm finding it harder and harder to stick up for Summer Ray. I really am, when you got so many better. Speaking of which, you see a little um, thing up there in in some magazine, I, I Latina something or other, they did a, a, a spread on the Bella Twins, on their success in the ring, their, <coughs> their success on Total Divas, their success on Total Bellas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, will, I will still defend the Bella Twins any day of the week. Jericho wishes his team a late, happy late, or sorry, a late happy Canada Day, which is good, and attempts his own version of a pep talk. Everybody starts talking to each other in different languages, in Swiss, in Irish, in Mexican, etc., etc., etc. Owens gets pissed off. He's the only guy that's actually showing any realism in the entire backstage segment, and he says, I don't care much how many languages you speak. After all the bullshit that happened earlier with the pie and, and the food fight and all this, I need to kick some American ass. Get it together, and he just fucks off, and it's and it's good. It's the only of the sixteen guys invited in, or sorry, involved in this whole clusterfuck match we have coming up later. Kevin Owens is the only one that's not treating it like a joke. I mean, it is a joke. It's going to be useless when we get to it. But Kevin Owens is at least you know amped up. He's at least ready to go for the fight for real. Enzo and Cass are roped into a Sonic commercial, and I just say, what the fuck? New Day come out, they're mo New Day come out, and my notes, my notes literally say New Day come out and mock the New Day. Four reasons. They mock the Wyatts, and holy shit, guys, yeah, again, the New Day are funny, but they start talking about, you know, the backwoods Wyatts and all, and there's a lot of incest jokes. A lot, like an uncomfortable amount of incest jokes, and it's just like, ah. I know a while ago there was a hashtag going around, it was like, that's not PG. Uh, incest jokes are not PG, just saying. Wyatt response is is creepy, it's Bray Wyatt, you can't really put it into words. They still are mocking it, they're still making some really awkward jokes. That Kofi and Big E are talking about how we're, we're gonna bring loaded cannons and we're gonna shoot positivity everywhere, and it's just like, oh... Uh, you're going for the for the simple laugh and any the original comedy that made New Day great is slowly fading and now we're just getting into this this really uncomfortable com. I'm not like I'm not shitting on it like it does raise a smirk but at the same time it's like eh. I hope that makes sense I hope people realize that I'm not shitting on the New Day I still think they're a great team in the ring they're fantastic but I think they're their their shtick is going in a in a in a direction that's a little off. Uh, Woods finally snaps out of his you know trance like state that 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 um, Bray Wyatt has had him in in the past couple of weeks, and he basically says, "You guys got to smarten the fuck up." You know, you guys aren't realizing what's going on. I think I can't believe you guys are still making jokes. Do you think, like, do you know what these guys are? These guys are giants. They're monsters. Do you know what they could do to us? You know, if you don't start taking this seriously, this could be the end of the New Day. And he kind of walks off all serious and shit. And 
if it is the end of the new day, I'm okay with that. But before the end of the new day, I hope we see them as a team, as a serious team, before they're completely destroyed. I hope that makes sense. I mean, the, the, the segment did its purpose. The, the two members of the New Day are being extremely goofy about it. The one actually realizes how much danger they're in, and the Wyatts are creepy like they always are. Um, so one of them to break off and say, look, guys, this is fucking serious shit. Um, I guess they had to go too far with the goofiness so that it could snap back into place. I just incest jokes and 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 talking about the sisters and the misters and they like to keep it all in the family it's just it's uncomfortable it's not it, you're not laughing because it's funny you're laughing because it's it's disgusting really um anyways we see a little graphic come up that says this week on smackdown we're going to be announcing brock lesnar's opponent for SummerSlam," which to me sounds like Hey guys, the draft hasn't happened yet. We're not live yet. But please watch SmackDown. That's what that feels like. Because Brock Lesnar's not going to be on SmackDown. They'll either just make the announcement or they'll have Paul Heyman there. That's how that'll go. Um, that's it. Then we have the 16-man tag. The Big Show, the Dudleys, Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, Kane, Zack Ryder, and Apollo Crews versus Chris Jericho, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus, and the Lucha Dragons. They all get national anthem entrances. So the, the USA team all comes out together, obviously. Um, the Lucha Dragons and Alberto Del Rio come out together to the Mexican national anthem. Sheamus comes out to the Irish national anthem. Cesaro comes out to the Swiss national anthem. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Chris Jero, Jericho come out to the Canadian National Anthem, which makes me smile. Not only because I'm Canadian, not only because it's the one of the only anthems that I recognize, but it gives me an opportunity to say thank you to all of you guys that have given such a positive response to the Canada Day special video I did one video ago. I've gotten a lot of positive response in the comment section of that video and on Facebook and Twitter. Really appreciate it. Really thought I was going to get shit on for putting Chris Benoit in there, and nobody has yet. And I think people get the fact that when I put when I included him in that, I was including his in-ring contributions, his in-ring talent, and his his you know his mark that he made on you know WWE, ECW, WCW, and etc. Um, in no way condoning what happened, you know the Benoit tragedy all that sort of thing, but I really suspect it, especially in the internet world that we live in, somebody would have shat on me for that, and nobody has, and I I know, I know wouldn't really blame you if you had, but I'm very thankful that nobody did, I'm thankful that people enjoyed the video, the people out there on Facebook that just came up randomly, even today, saying like, hey, uh, you don't know me, but I'm Canadian too, thanks for putting this together, this is really great, it's a really cool thing, I might do more things like that in the future. Tell me if you guys like them. I mean, it's not the most in-depth thing in the world. It's a friggin' uh, it's a tribute slideshow. Um, I'm glad you guys liked it. Thank you for all the positive response. And obviously Zayn, Jericho, and Owens are a part of that. So go check it out if you haven't. Hope you keep enjoying it and hope the lack of bullshit keeps going. <laughs> Anyways, Ryder and Owens start the brawl. Corner clothesline and a bowling ball by Owens. Boot by Ryder. Kalisto and Devon trade punches. Crossbody by Sin Cara. 3D on Sin Cara by the Dudleys. And Sin Cara is eliminated. Brogue kick from Sheamus to Bubba Ray Dudley. And a splash by Kalisto and Bubba Ray Dudley is eliminated. Clothesline by Devon on Kalisto as we go to commercial break. Excuse me. Devon and Cesaro trade punches, and we get a swing on Devon by Cesaro. A sharpshooter by Cesaro. And Devon is eliminated by submission. Oh yes, Cesaro and Swagger, or sorry, yeah, Swagger and Cesaro do the We the People shtick from when they were the Real Americans. Then they have collar and elbow tie up and a long chain wrestling sequence. Swagger clotheslines Jericho and hits him with a really hard belly to belly corner clothesline, boot by Jericho and a code breaker. And Swagger is eliminated. Everybody on Team America, ever sorry, everybody comes in. Everybody brawls in the middle, like you know when when the referees lost all control. 
Everybody piles into the ring. Team America stands tall, even though they're at a two-man deficit. Right As it stands right now in this brawl, Team America has five guys left on it, and Team International, Team International Alliance, whatever the hell they called it, has seven. But they stand tall anyways, because America. We come back, Alberto De Rio's got a headlock on Apollo Crews, and it back, hits him with a backsta backstabber and a hangman. Dropkick by Crews, clothesline by... Clothesline by Henry, World's Strongest Slam on Kalisto, which just looks funny. Kalisto is eliminated. Pop up fucking powerbomb on Mark Henry by Kevin Owens is the maneuver of the match. Mark Henry is eliminated. Owens hits a running Sinton on Ryder at a super kick. But here's where the match goes to shit, guys. And 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 for the next couple of sequences, try to follow this on. Owens wants Zayn to tag in, starts shouting things at him like, you know, come in, do your part, Roddy, Roddy, Rock. Zayn and Owens start fighting each other. Kane clotheslines, Kane, who's from Team America, clotheslines Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens comes in and hits his own partner with a chair. He hits his own partner with a chair. And he's eliminated for that. Now... Owens goes after Kane after the match. Now, the legal guy at that point in the match would be Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn, Kane, you hit Kane with the chair. Sami Zayn could be eliminated, I guess, but no. Kane hits Owens with the chair, who's already not in the match. Kane, or Kevin Owens is no longer a participant in the match. But for kidding, hitting Kevin Owens with the chair, Kane is eliminated and, dis and disqualified. Why? Kane chokeslams Zayn anyway, and Cruz makes the pin, and Zayn is eliminated. None of that made sense. Owens got eliminated for hitting his own partner with a chair. Kane got eliminated for hitting somebody with a chair that wasn't even in the match. Oh, the logic is lacking. Kane hits a clothesline on... Sorry, Kane hits a choke slam on Zayn. Cruz, who is still in the match, pins Zayn, and Zayn is eliminated. Brogue kick by Sheamus, and Apollo Cruz is eliminated. Suplex toss on Ryder by Sheamus. Stomps by Jericho. Stomps by Jericho while he's singing O Canada in the middle of the ring, and I'm sitting here with a fucking smile on my face, mostly because I'm laughing my ass off, because this is fucking shit. Um... Jericho and Sheamus double team uh, DDT by Alberto Del Rio. Cesaro is the only person on his team that hasn't been involved in the match in a while. Starts arguing with his teammates, brings all three of his teammates in, throws his teammates into all three corners of the ring, and does the uppercut train on the three remaining teammates that he has. Now, he should get eliminated for hitting his own partner, shouldn't he, like we saw earlier in the match? But he doesn't. What he does get eliminated by is Ryder, who sneaks in while he's distracted fighting with his own team. Zack Ryder beat Cesaro with a roll-up. Oh, fucking yes. Cesaro is eliminated. Dropkick and corner chops to uh, Ryder by Jericho. Neckbreaker by Ryder to Sheamus. Big Show kills everybody and hits a KO punch on Jericho. Jericho is eliminated. Chokeslam by Show and Alberto De Rio is eliminated. Which leaves us with Sheamus for Team International and Zack Ryder in the Big Show for Team America. Could I care less? Corner chops by Show and some knees. Low drop kick by Sheamus and a beat down on Ryder. Show throw <coughs> Show throws Sheamus into a Rough Rider, and Sheamus is eliminated. Your winners are Team USA, and representing Team USA is Zack Ryder and the Big Show, and that's how we end the show. What the fuck? I could forgive everything else on this show. I really could. This match is garbage. Not only did the people that need a push get squashed, not only were the, did the eliminations make no sense, not only did the teams make no sense, but the last two people standing are The Big Show and Zack Ryder. And this match had no relevance to anything. It didn't gain anything for anybody. Anybody. Um... But if you ignore that massive clusterfuck main event, which was the last sixth of the show, um, we got a women's match signed tonight. We have a six-man tag signed for tonight. We built up Zayn versus Owens, I guess. We did some continuous build towards the triple, the shield triple threat as much as we can without Roman being there. Um, Titus O'Neil did not win the affirmative. I mean, 
United States Championship, which is good. We need a new opponent for Rusev. We need a new opponent for The Miz and his Intercontinental Championship. We have not yet solidified uh, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, which we need to, but we're getting there. This was one of those shows where you go in and you're like, this is going to be corny. Can I make it through? I made it through the rain, folks. And what I have to tell you is happy 4th of July. This show was corny as shit. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys. Don't die, don't